So my A3000 broke. Just gives me green screen, flashing lights and a red screen. And still, there's an Amiga on the screen. That is my mister, which I have mounted to the back of the screen, which I will show you later. And to make the illusion perfect, I have this new tank mouse, which you can use either as USB, which is in the mister, or with this adapter in a real Amiga, which just takes the USB and converts it to 9-pin. And I have this keyboard right here, which I'm using, which is a USB keyboard, which is plugged into the mister, but I want the 3000 keyboard. And to use this with a mister, there's no solution. Or is there? And yes, there is indeed. And it takes this plug right here and converts it to USB. And it costs about 10 bucks to, to build this connector or this adapter. And we will do just that in this video. Okay, let's build this adapter. Um, to connect the keyboard we need to have an adapter which takes the plug of the Amiga keyboard on one side which is a 5 pin DIN connector but uh, I only have an uh, what is this an 8 pin and just cut off some pins and I bent pin 3 because it's not used so here's pin, pin 3 which is bent to the side so we won't solder any um, wires there now we'll use simple DuPont cables for now. We'll cut these off, solder these ends here, and then I can just uh, plug them into the um, Arduino when it's finished. I did already put the cables inside this little uh, cover here, so I don't forget. Yeah, so I, with the power of my brain, reverse engineered this PCB wasn't too hard, just had to draw some lines. And what it came down to is that we have um, pin one, which is the clock signal on this, which goes to pin eight on the Arduino. We have pin four, which is ground, pin two, which is data, pin five, which is VCC, which goes to VCC on the Arduino, and pin three is not used. So we have just four cables, and that is pretty much what this thing does in a bit nicer package and you also have the option to do um, the A500 keyboard connector which is not a big deal. If you look here you can see you have to connect pin 1 to pin 1, um, pin 4 of the connector to pin 6 and these are um, ordered from 1 to 8 and the key, there's one pin missing on the keyboard connector or one cable is pin 5. So if you go like this, you can see pin 1 and pin 4 where it connects. And you can see that pin 6 goes to ground and pin 4 goes to VCC. And like that you have all the cables you need. Let's build this cable which is just cutting off ends and soldering four wires. So see you in a minute. That's it. All cable is on. That gives us the plug. I will now bend this back so that I can put the cover on. Press this together so the cables have some strain relief. Okay, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so that's our connectors. Now we connect this to the Arduino. I'm on my Windows machine and uh, here we have to open a new browser, go to this website. So this website is by Thomas Köckerbauer and he made this adapter which consists of an Arduino Pro Micro. 
and that DIN connector. So according to his um, website, we have to go and we have to download this pre-compiled build. We can build it ourselves using the Arduino IDE. I will not do that because why bother? And we go here and then we have to go here because we want to download this and we have all the files here and we go to code, download zip. And then we have that zip file. And just put this on the desktop for now. And in here should be the hex file and there it is. And this hex file is a pre-compiled of this uh, inno file, which is the source code. And this is what we will upload to the uh, Pro Micro. For that, we have to download software. I'm on Windows, by the way, which is called AVR Dude. And it's here. So let's go to this website. I will link the websites in the description below. So we go and we download the x64 version. And we extract that and I have a folder called AVR dude here. And there I just put these files. Let's do this. Extract the uh, place the uh, right next to the extracted file. Ah, okay, we have to start it from a Windows prompt. I see. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Um, right next to the extracted files. Okay, so we have to put our Amiga keyboard hex next here. Put it in here. Now it's here. So we have the RBA dude files and the hex file. Then we go and we open a shell. Uh, we are here and we type CMD, which doesn't put us in the same directory, but at least it puts us here. And I go desktop and I go a, since I put that on desktop, a VR dude, and we should be in there. Now we have to plug in the Pro Micro. So here's this little microcontroller and you need a, in my case, a USB-C plug. You could buy this with a normal micro USB. And then we just go and plug this like it is into the PC, I think. So I did plug it in. Serial port will be recognized as new COM port. Ah, okay, let's check device manager. And let's see, USB controller is already open. Let's check up here. Ah, Arduino Micro, COM4. Great, there it is. Good. Um, and then we just take this here. And we copy this and we put this in the shell and hopefully, that would have been too easy. Ah, okay, it's COM5, it's not COM5 in my case, it's COM4. We have to change that at least. Oh! Wait, does this work or not? Ready to accept instructions, reading, writing, verifying. I think it worked. First time, wow, that, that's the first time for me that something worked the first time especially for these microcontrollers which i really really hate because you always have to sometimes it's just a wrong usb port or something like this they are very finicky so great okay that seems to be flashed nice okay i think that's all there is to it uh, let's unplug this and we can use as i understand it the same usb cable to just plug into any device and see if it recognizes the keyboard then when the adapter is ready. So now it's just a matter of connecting the DIN connector to the Pro Micro. Let's do this. Okay, the Pro Micro is programmed and uh, you can see here are the, here's the description of the pins and we need pin 8, ground 9 and VCC. So we have to connect the ground lines which 
should, uh, should be three off, yeah, three. Uh, and we have to put VCCs there. Yeah, first I wanted to put the header on, but it's much more compact if I leave it like that and kind of I can just wrap some uh, tape around it and have perfectly flat connector. So I will, I think, just use this and cut off the ends and solder to the thingy here because I have to do some soldering anyway. Okay, so let me do this and then I will show you. Yeah, these DuPont cables do break pretty easily, so they are not great for soldering. So I did solder the blue wire, which is the clock signal in my case, on pin 1 to pin 8 here. Now I solder the green wire, which is pin 4 on my connector here, to ground. But I have to put a second wire from here to here and I have to connect these two ground wires. So I will first connect the ground. Okay, ground wire is in. Now we have pin 5, which is orange, to VCC, which is next to the ground up here. That's good. And the final cable is the yellow one, which goes to, which is a data cable, which goes to pin number 9, which is in the corner down here. Okay, I think this is pretty much it. So let's check. We have the yellow cable, which is pin number 2 in my connector here, which goes to pin number 9 here. We have pin number 1 here, which is the blue cable, which goes to pin number 8 here, which is correct. We have the ground, which is pin number 4 here, which goes to ground here. And this ground is connected here to grounds. And one ground goes over here to the ground up here, which is good. And we have the orange cable, VCC, which is up here. And that is pin number 5 here. So let's double check continuity from here to here. And uh, then we are ready to test, because this is programmed, this is connected, nothing more to do. Okay, here's the adapter plugged into my PC. And uh, yeah, that goes to this black Amiga 3000 keyboard. And that PC is connected to that screen over there. So if I type on my keyboard, you can see. Freaking works. Freaking works. Even the caps lock here, as you saw. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So now I can can finish my project and attach this keyboard to the mister, which is on the backside of the screen. There it is. Right now it's mounted with one of these VESA uh, metal plates to the monitor. I can switch it on here. And then it lights up and goes off and it does we are quick enough you can see that oh no switch off the screen now it boots if i start it directly into amiga os and i have my uh, usb tank mouse attached here this is one of these new tank mouses from Kickstarter. And I did just install um, 3.2.1, uh, the last update. Yeah, it works just fine. And I have my, my share here. Uh, let me show you. This is a share. You can go to the PC and via FTP put stuff into this directory. Then you can, oh man, it's hard to see through the camera. Then you can uh, actually, if you put it in via FTP into the directory on the PC, it shows up here, which is quite nice. I have my work directory, I have the Picasso driver installed so that I have the higher resolutions, which I don't use right now. 
Let me show you. So this is pretty much a dream Amiga. Uh, where is your yeah, screen modes? You can see here are the Mr. Screen modes which you can use. Yeah. And right now I have this connected, uh, which is it's an old monitor which I had on the other machine over over there, behind there, my Checkmate 1500. Which has an Amiga 500 with a Witcher we we share card inside. Yeah, it turns out this Mister Amiga is pretty cool. Yeah, so if you want to sh to, to know, so if you want to know how I set up this uh, Amiga on the Mister, which was quite some some work, if you don't know how to and have never done it. Um, I can make a video about this because this is pretty much the best Amiga you can get. And if you do a little sysinfo here, let me do this. So right now I'm using this USB keyboard here, which I have stickers on and I have used this um, for the mister for quite some time now. But it's much cooler to use a real Amiga keyboard and I have the plug already unplugged from the 3000. Because the 3000 uh, has problems and I knew that when I bought it but it worked fine for a while and now it doesn't it just shows a green screen and then a red screen and before I showed a yellow screen which I have fixed but uh, I'm still on the green and red screen so I have to fix that until then I will have my illusion of an Amiga 3000 because it's, it's just a box and the Amigas here and it's the same screen the same keyboard the same mouse I'm even thinking about putting the Mister next to the standard Amiga 3000 into the case with lighting up LEDs and stuff like that. And the only thing I can't do right now is use the 3.5 inch disk drive. But Rob Smith, who did the Grease Weasel and the uh, Amiga Bridge, which, which was my very first video on this channel a few years ago, is working on a driver to put this into the Mr. Core, so in the Minimic Core. So if that works, you can actually emulate a complete Amiga with your Mr. And that would be pretty awesome. You can already do this with a Raspberry Pi, and I showed that in my Not a Real A1200 video, where I used a, um, a Grease Weasel um, inside an Amiga to do just that. So. If you haven't seen that, go check it out now. Uh, this info, yeah, right. So, alone getting the screen to be perfect took quite some time. Uh, let me show you. So this is even faster. Even it's an A1200 right now with an uh, 68 EC020. Um, which runs at 99 megahertz or 100 and you can see I am 25.79 times the speed of an A600 and 2.83 times the speed of an A3000 almost almost an A4000 um, but these numbers are relative because it's just the speed of the um, of the processor you can see it's pretty pretty red. Um, what you don't have is something like a floating point unit FPU, which in real time or in real world scenarios uh, would give you much better performance. And you don't have optimized um, instructions in the processor, which may result in a higher performance on a on a machine which is uh, higher rated here. So like the 3000 might still be faster in in some. Um, scenarios than this machine that Mr. here because it has these optimized instructions in the 68 or 30 or, or 40 or, or 60 whatever. Yeah so um, maybe one of the next videos will be me putting a Mr. next to a real 3000 into an A3000 case just because I can and I now have all the things to make it work. Yeah. That's it for this video. So I was just cutting the video when I noticed that I actually haven't showed the final product. 
which is the working A3000 keyboard over there on the mister. So yeah, here's my adapter. I just wrapped it in some electrical tape and it's connected uh, oh yeah, to my A3000, which goes over the uh, cable, which goes over there. And uh, let me get around, or oh, let's start the mister first. This it starts up. So keyboard is here, mouse is here. And of course it wasn't that easy um, to connect this keyboard. You can connect it, which is not a big deal, and it basically works, but the mister has some function keys, like the F12 key with which you bring up this menu. If you take a look at the A3000 keyboard, you'll see no, no F12. And another thing is that the keyboard adapter maps these two keys. It doesn't map this one, I think, and it maps this one to this key. And you have to remap that. And that is, yeah, you have to see because not all keys can be remapped. So what I did is I put the F12 key on the F6 key. And if I press F6 now, I get this, which is pretty important to change disks and stuff like that. So that works now. And I have um, these two mapped. So I, especially if you program in C, you need these curly brackets and uh, they work. So if I go to the shell, you can see here, typing gives me these and shift and Give me this and F6 opens and closes this. So how did I do it? Let me show you. For that I have to reboot because my my Mister is set up like this that it boots right into the Amiga in the standard configuration. And what you have to do is you have to go to the main menu of the Mister, press F6, then you have remap keyboard and the thing is that you have to press the key you want to map to first and then the key you want to remap. So in my case, if you want to remap F12 to F6, you have to press F6 first and F12 then. And it took me a while to grasp my brain around that and it's counterintuitive, I think, to do it that way. And then uh, on the mister side there's a config file created in the config folder for every keyboard you have attached so this gets its own id and then you have for this keyboard these remapped keys yeah that is pretty much all there is to it so now i have the a3000 keyboard attached to the mister it works i'm happy and i can program in c and the amiga c workshop videos are coming up very very soon Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.